there's one last thing that I want to show you before I move on to the book example is I just showed you two ways to create a folding brochure and to be honest the examples that I gave you it doesn't mean it has to be a gatefold brochure it could be an accordion or a roll fold brochure the roll fold would need a few modifications but I would have to send a physical dummy or explain how the brochure folds when I send it to the commercial printer the last thing I want to show you is you don't necessarily have to use pages to identify your folds it's my preference I think that that is is easier to communicate if I want this last panel to be one inch wide if I make the page one inch wide it is screaming that that is the the width of that panel but you don't have to you could create a new InDesign document and turn facing pages off so this entire lecture has been about facing pages if you can calculate the flat size of your brochure and so our panels are each four by six so our flat size would be sixteen by six you can create a new and design document that's sixteen by six make sure it has two pages and in this case i'm going to turn the facing pages off and then once you create your document you could use guides to divide your workspace but it would be up to you to make sure that you measure the panels right and you'd come in and put one at every four inches and then you could design on the flat layout all the pages that you want to have in your project. And that's just another option. Uh, figure out what works best for you and then choose that option moving forward. So I want to do one more example. That's our book example and that's the example that you're really going to use this process the entire lecture has been about for. If we go to InDesign and create a new document, in our example we had an eight and a half by eleven inch book that had thirty six pages plus two additional fold outs so I'm going to create a document that's thirty six pages eight and a half by eleven facing pages being a good print child I'm going to add standard printing bleeds and I'll just leave the margins at whatever the default is set so now if we look at our pages panel we can see that we have a thirty six page document if I keep scrolling down and as per our diagram, we established that we need four additional pages, and so the next step is to add those pages. One, two, three, four. We should end up with a total of 40 pages. And then we need to turn page shuffling off. You can do that via the option flyout menu in the top right-hand corner of the panel. And then I'm going to turn page shuffling off. The last thing we need to do is we have identified that we need an extra panel next to pages 9, 10, 27, and 28. So starting with the, the highest number, 28, and working my way backwards, I am going to drag and drop the, those extra four pages, pages 37, 38, 39, and 40, so that they're in the right position. So I'll drag and drop to the left of page 28 because that matches both my folding dummy and the diagram that I drew. Repeat that for the right-hand side of page 27. The left-hand side of page 10, I'm going to have to scroll up a little bit. I'll just drop it here for a second. There we go. And then we need one more page on the right hand side of page nine. I couldn't get all the way up there, so I dropped it and then I'll reattach it. Now because we've added three pages in front or four pages in front of page 28, page 28 is no longer page 28 to us. We zoom in here. You can see now it thinks it's page 32, which is logical, right? We added four pages before it, so page 28 should be page 32. Um, although the page numbers no longer match our diagram, the pattern should. And so if you get your diagram out and you have it side by side, you will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pages, and then a fold out to the right, a fold out to the left, and then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, etc. cetera pages. I think that working with the book is harder than creating a brochure because with the brochure you do have a number of options. You could just have all the fold out panels to the right and then all the fold out panels to the left on your diagram or you can turn facing pages off and just make two big documents and you could manually do all the math to break it down. I think that's a little harder than just using the pages. Um, the last thing you'll need to do when you're making a book is when you make a book you have to trim it on three sides. You trim the head, the face, and the foot. But when you trim the face, which is the right-hand side if you're looking at the cover, you will trim straight through the entire book, meaning if there is a folded portion of the cover or back cover or this gate signature, it will get sliced straight through, making the sheet loose, and the, the sheet will fall out of your project. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these, pan 
these panels, page 9, 10, 11, and 12 in the new numbered document. I am going to make them slightly smaller so they're on the inside of the book. So when I trim the face of the book, it will not go through that panel at all. To do that, you need to select the pages that you're working with. And I'll do this twice. I'll probably do it four times and do pages 29, 30, 31, and 32 as well. Select the page, pages, or spread that you're working with. At the very bottom of your pages panel, there is an edit page size button. If you push that, you can find the option that you need. So if you needed 8.25 by 11, that's what I want. I would look on this list and see if I have 8.25 by 11. Now I don't have that, so I'm going to go to the bottom and choose custom. Let me zoom out here. You can add your own custom size. I like to make the name whatever the size of the page that I'm making. And then don't forget to actually change the size. And so I'm going to make mine 8 and a, eight and a quarter by 11 and select OK. These pages are slightly smaller. You cannot tell by looking at them. Even if we went to the actual page, if I double click and go to page 9 and we zoom out, it's really hard to tell that they're slightly smaller. But let me show you that it is true. So I'm going to make a box on this page that is the exact width of the page, width and height. And I'm going to double check that up here on the options bar and make sure it's 8.5 by 11. And then I'm going to change the fill color and we'll make it red. Now I'm going to select pages 11 and 12, hit the edit page size button, and choose that new 8.25 by 11. Now you can't really tell if I remove this that it's not the same size. But if I put my rectangle back on the page, you will see that my rectangle is now a quarter inch wider than the first page. And if I put it on the second page here, which is page 12, you'll see that it's also a quarter inch wider than that page. Let's repeat that so that we can do our whole book. So we'll do page 28 and 30. I don't know if I can select, oh I can. So I'm gonna grab 28, I'm sorry, 29, 30, 31, and 32, and change all of them at once. So you'll select the pages, hit the edit page size button, and then choose the new size of 8.25 by 11. And now all the pages are the correct size that are needed for my production. My book will be 8.5 by 11. When I'm done, I'll trim it to 8.5 by 11. But that one panel will be a quarter inch shorter than the rest so that I don't have to do anything fancy when I'm trimming the book.